Death is an integral part of life, and each of us will eventually face the loss of a loved one. But at the age of 46, I hadn't yet experienced the death of an immediate family member. When we moved our family of seven to Connecticut in 1992, I was very concerned over the deteriorating health of my father. He was diagnosed with cancer shortly after our move. I am grateful that in August of 1994, my entire family was on vacation in Michigan for two weeks, and we had a chance to express our love and our faith to Dad before he was gone. I will never forget my 16-year-old daughter, Dina, telling Dad to remember, Jesus is real and Jesus loves you. In the middle of that two-week period, Dad slipped into a coma. For several hours, he lay staring with his eyes open, but with no eye movement. And we finally left the hospital fully expecting to receive news during the night that he had passed away. To our surprise, there was no such call. Dad not only survived the night, but when he returned to the hospital the next day, he was sitting up eating his lunch, more alert and energized than he had been in weeks. The nurses told us they couldn't believe his good spirits and how dramatically he had changed overnight. He was visited earlier that same morning by a longtime friend and the two of them enjoyed a wonderful reunion. Amazed to see him so alert and lucid, I asked, what he recalled of his condition the day before. To me, he looked like he had already died. Perhaps he'd been having a near-death experience similar to those I had read about and heard others speak of. I'd given such stories little credibility in the past. Dad was not a religious man, certainly not one to share his faith outwardly. But he was a good and honest man who worked tirelessly to support his family and always tried to live by righteous principles. If anything like that had happened, I knew he would, he would give an accurate and earnest account according to his best recollection. With glee, he told me, I saw a wonderful, loving world. It's a beautiful place beyond description, and I can't wait to return. While he was in that coma, he had an encounter he had often heard of and read about. He went on to say, I was drawn into a beautiful and warm, bright light. In the warmth of that light, all of my pain slipped away and I was completely immersed in goodness and in love. Naturally, he wanted to return. In fact, he had derived his renewed energy and spirit from the fact that he'd be returning there soon. Dad was tired and he didn't elaborate much further. He never said he saw Jesus, but this was clearly a transitional moment for him a truly transcendent and ecstatic experience. When we said our goodbyes in the hospice a few days later and started our drive back to Connecticut, I was surprised that even though I knew I would not see my father again in this life, I wasn't sad. It wasn't until I thought about the events that had transpired that I recognized why sorrow was not on my radar screen. After Dad's experience, we all realized that we could look forward to a reunion with him in the life beyond. I was so grateful that I had been with Dad for those final two weeks, and that my dismay over his comatose state turned to joy when I learned he had been given a peaceful and inviting glimpse of the world beyond. We left feeling we had just had an experience blessed by God, who had actually revealed divine truth to Dad and to the family through him. We were very close to our home in Connecticut when I received the call that Dad had passed away. It was the first major loss of a loved one in my life, yet it didn't cause agonizing grief or pain. God had watched out for my family in allowing us to arrive in Michigan before Dad had died. If he had died just two weeks sooner, I would not have heard my daughter's confession of faith to him I would not have heard the story of his near-death experience. I would not have shared in his glimpse of the blessings of the other side. And I would not have had the personal reassurance of the gift of eternity provided by a gracious and loving God. I will forever be grateful for each of those gifts. For more on this story and for other inspirational stories, or to get more information on my book, God Revealed, you are welcome to visit the website www.godrevealed.com.